Uh, there's a new poll that shows about a third of the Midwest battleground voters say that the president deserves to be reelected. Maybe these are the factors that are coming to play. Former chief of staff to Paul Ryan, David Hoppe here, conservative commentator Kathy Barnett on uh, whether this trade concern could make things worse. Now, ironically, when you look at the, the latest GDP number, David, might have made the GDP number better in that a lot of people were we're, you know, uh, getting this stuff out to customers, particularly the Chinese in the case of soybeans and agricultural goods, before the hammer came down. But, but by and large, it can be a problem, right? It can be a problem. But if, if, Neil, what we're facing right now is the president is trying to use some leverage here with, uh, with tariffs. Uh, so far with Europe, it seems to have had some effect, but there are downside effects which farmers are already seeing. And this is the danger with tariffs. This is the danger with a, with a trade war, is that you don't know if it's going to be the snowball that stops rolling down the mountain or the avalanche that starts. And we still don't know the answer to that. So you've got some farmers who, while they like the president, are very concerned because they have to live week to week and month to month. And if the prices stay low, living week to week and month to month is very hard because they're losing more money. And so they are, while they're hopeful the president will be able to win this, they're not sure themselves whether this trade war will work. You know, Kathy, if the president lost all the states where he is having a tough time in the polls right now, he would not get reelected, assuming that all the others that he won, he wins again. But if he were to lose these three states in question, Wisconsin comes to mind, Minnesota, and some of these, uh, that, that he'd be in, in deep trouble. Do you buy that? Yeah, you know what? I think we should have learned from the 2016 presidential election that we cannot put that much credence on polls. And You're I, right and about I, that. And I assign that same kind of sentiment to this particular poll as well, which looked at only less than a thousand uh, registered voters. Instead, true, I think that there are some people um, in our country that if President Trump walked on water, they would criticize him for not being able to swim. But then you have the rest of America. I believe that the, that the, that the choices are very clear when you're looking at the Democratic Party versus the party of President Trump. You have the Democratic Party that have really no sustainable, economical, economic, viable uh, strategy other than Russia, but you Russia, don't Russia. But you don't think at it that there is some frustration there? It might not be to the extreme that they would just say, oh, the heck with you, Mr. President. But well, you don't think there's there legitimate is. concern that this tariff thing is going to come back to bite him? Well, of course there is. But if not now, then when? We are the most powerful country in the world. And I think it's high time that we start acting like the most powerful country in the world. When is going to be a good time that we sit our allies and those who are a little bit of both our competitors and our um, competition to be able to sit down and say to them, listen, we need to renegotiate this thing. We charge you 2.5% to bring your automobiles here. You're charging us 10%. The, uh, uh, the Second World War is over. These countries are now viable and able to stand on their own two feet. So my question to the American population is, if not now, when? Do we continue to allow ourselves to be taken advantage of? Or do we say enough is enough? Let's get back to the table while we have the leverage to do so. Um, that is the argument for this, David. What do you think of that? Well, if you look at the opening that uh, that Larry Kudlow and Ambassador Gunnell and the president have talked about in automobiles to Europe, the Germans seem to be interested in talking about this. We should look at that opportunity of getting rid of all barriers to trade in automobiles with Europe. That would be a great step forward, and it's good to see the president looking at that. Clearly, that's in his mind. I think that uh, Mr. Kudlow and Ambassador Grinnell have had a great effect on that, but the president also wants to find that. Yes, some of these treaties can be better negotiated than they were. We haven't had perfection in that, but the, you have to be very careful in how you go about it, and I think the strategy of going about it may be a little different in that we ought to look to combine with some of the, our, our, our allies against the Chinese who are doing things like taking, stealing IP or forcing companies to give over some of their, uh, some of their intellectual property in terms of uh, if they want to get a, uh, if they want to trade with them or if they want to establish a factory over there. We have to be stronger and the rest of the world has to go and to the WTO and say the Chinese have to be treated as a developed nation in the WTO. This has to change and it has to change now. I agree completely. Oh, good. I thought we'd have any differences. I, I, well, that's the way I roll, guys. Look, we can, can, can avoid the, you know, disharmony all the better. Uh, have a great weekend, guys. I do appreciate it.